Hey, how you doing, fight fans? How you doing, YouTube? Game of Thrones here. Uh, I've got a star cutting guest, P Styles, J Deals, and some other guys, man. So, hope you guys enjoy him. See what's going on. D Styles, you back, man? Yeah, what's going on? What's going on? There you go. There you go. We're good to go. We're good to go. Yeah, man. We're all good. We're all good, man. So, where we start left off from last week was uh, Man and getting into the bed. And she was looking like, you know, she's she real sorry for herself. And then we start. This one's called Homebound. This series, um, episode, season six, episode two, Homebound. And we start with, who's the young boy? Who's the young stock boy in the tree? What's his name? Uh, is it Bran? Yeah, I think it's Bran. So you see, see Bran, um, basically a flashback of Bran looking at his father, his grandfather. And um, who's the guy? Who's his uncle? What's his uncle's name again? Benjamin, Benjamin or Benjamin, there Benjamin? you go in the courtyard, yeah. Benjamin in the courtyard, and um, there's yeah. they're going out. So, what's your take of that little whole flashback in the past? Uh, these days, well, well, <laughs> is it just fear that this kid aged like five years or something? Like that, that's what it appeared to be. Um, he oh, hasn't yeah. been on screen that long, right? He's got taller in it, yeah. He's got taller and stronger for real, yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, like he, he hit puberty right on time or something, like a little too soon for the show. <laughs> he's uh, he's got Harry Harry Potter problems where he's outgrowing the show, man. You know, <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, that's exactly what I was thinking. Go ahead, go ahead. But then again, he he's been off screen for what two years already. So you know, you know what I mean. And young boys when they're teens, they do kind of they have that growth spurt or whatever. So there you go. But um, I I love the flashback, man. I kind I don't know why. Like it, nothing major happened in the flashback. You know. Oh, 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 oh don't forget Odo oh, now. Yeah, yeah, like he was talking and stuff like that. Like that happened, you know. Um, now it makes me wonder, though, why why can he only say one word now? They never like kind of – they never I mean, specified, right? Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I think something might happen to him maybe because you know that he, that he had the shield and stuff. Maybe they might hit him on his head when he was sparring, when he was doing – when he was drafting. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just guessing. That because remember his mom kept on grabbing by his, his name's William. Yeah, that's a that's a good educated guess though. Like it is possible yeah. that they were sparring and they hit him too hard with one of those wooden swords or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know what? Or maybe that. somebody took it too far and beat him up or something. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 and it jumped him and done him and he's probably upset. You know what I was thinking as well? It reminds me of that. So who's that guy? The Tully, Thingy Tully. What's his name again? The one from the the fat one, the one John Snow saved. It reminds me of that kind of scenario. Yeah, at first I thought it was him. I don't know yeah. why. And then I was like, wait a minute, it's not him, you know? Yeah, yeah. It reminded me of that, but they were obviously – they were Her, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that little bit. But that was interesting, that little – the whole – to see him talk. I was like, oh, Odo actually talked at one point. He wasn't – there's a dude. Sam Tarly, by the way. Huh? Samuel Tarly. Yeah, there you Samuel go. Samuel Tarly. There you go. That's it, Samuel Tarly, yeah. He wasn't just a dude. But you know, the bit what kind of – I was interested. The bit with the young girl outside – Who's that young girl out? Who's the girl outside waiting for waiting for um, Brent? Who's that? Who's you're that? talking outside of the out. You're not talking about the flashback, right? You're talking yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. Not the flashback. I think the flashback's done. But there's a girl. Oh, she's a wild kid. She's outside. Who's that? No, no. She's uh, she's like uh, one of the children of the forest. So I guess on either the last one or one of the last ones left. Right? But which one? The one the one with the the mask on her face or the other one? The the children of the forest, right? Were the ones that lived in Westeros before the humans came over and took over, basically. Yeah, yeah. but and, the, and they, they, there was two of them, though. There was one who had the contact lenses and the strange face, and there was a young girl. Yeah. Who's the young girl? That's the girl from the forest. Oh, I, okay, okay. You're not talking about. Okay, I, I see. I don't yeah. know. I forgot if she's a wildling or not. I know who you're talking about now. I, yeah, I, got, kind of, I don't know who that is. The brother died, right? Yeah, oh, that was her. Oh, okay. They've changed the actors then. They've changed the actors then, isn't it? That's not yeah. the same girl. Okay. No, no, I think it is the same girl. It's, it's the same thing with her. She just got older. Like, that. that's what it is. Oh, right. see. Yeah, you're right. We haven't seen her in two years. That, that's why. It's like, like, whoa, who's this? You know, it kind of took a moment yeah, to, yeah. um. Yeah, to adjust to that. But yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, Jay Dills, I'll meet yourself, bro. Jay Dills. What up? What up, man? How you doing, man? Here with these stars, bro. We're just talking. We're just talk, catching up on the, the flashback. What's your take on the flashback? Um, I finally understand that hoarder could say more than just hoarder. Um, <laughs> I also understand that, you know, 
brain more about this. Also, this is pretty fucking cool. And um, I see Brand is still in training with the visions and stuff like that. But I wonder down the road how he's going to use the visions with the White Walkers. But overall, that was a good opening scene. I enjoyed it. It's kind of like um, the Three Eyed Raven is is kind of teaching him, but he's not taking him back to look at some gruesome stuff or stuff he could handle. Like you know what I mean? It's just kind of like. He's taking it easy on him right now, but I think he's. I think we're gonna get some flashbacks in the backstory. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the stuff that happened in the backstory. Here we've got Spencer. Spencer Theron is coming in as well, boy. <laughs> Everyone is jumping in to give it a take. I think. Are you doing Spencer? You're live on a uh, boxing game of Thrones. What's going on, Spencer? Real boy, I told you about that redhead woman, you know. <laughs> Which redhead woman? Oh, Melisandre. Yeah, in Game of Thrones, man. I told you, man. Would you, would you, would you, what? You told her, like, she'll get John Stark alive, yeah? Look, do you see John Stark just wake up? Yeah, 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 yeah,
I mean, he should have known if he killed Jon Snow that there was going to be retaliation from the Wildlings, you know. Yeah. So, so I'm kind of, I, you know, it just it, a lot of that doesn't make sense. But I mean, you know, it, it's it's just to set up the storyline like a bit, so, so I get it. But I'm not going to nitpick it too much. But interesting seeing it was kind of fun to watch the the um, the giant just pick that dude up and just smash him against the wall. <laughs> relative ease. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was something, man. Um, but yeah, it was good. Good scene. I mean, um, it was kind of obvious they were going to kill them. Like you know, it, it's and they knew it. So yeah. you know, it is what it is. And they John, you see, it's all. Jay Dill, who's your take on that bit, bro? Man, that was just one jealous bitch that got handled. I mean. It was just, at the end of the day, man, he don't understand why Snow wanted to make the alliance. The reason why the Wildlings got mad because Snow put in them, put in that work. He earned his stripes. He grew he grew their respect. Yeah. And you know, Snow went in war with the White Walkers like they did, and they all saw hell break out loose, and they know what they're up against. They were like, yeah, for now, we just going to have to be brothers. Fuck this land and everything. We got to protect not just the wall, but the region and possibly other lands. And the wildlings get the bigger picture. Snow gets the bigger picture. It's just the Night's Watch. They didn't experience that type of um, legion coming their way. If they did, they would understand my enemy is my adversary. I mean, my enemy is my king, is my friend yeah. for now. Yeah. But since they don't know the reason... And Snow didn't clarify it enough, and the Wildlings didn't either. This is why Snow was considered a traitor. Even if it, he, he did, and they just set up in their minds, like, fuck this Wildling, they just going to have to see to believe. And when that happens, that might be too little too late. But right now, because the leadership getting re-handled and revamped, I think you're going to see the Night's Watchmen and... The wildlings and snow and others just take on these beasts looking motherfuckers because they coming. They really are coming. Uh, I, I can't I, wait to that little kid, man, watches a, a, a White Walker for real. <laughs> Me either, man. Hopefully he has some Valerian glass by then, but who knows. <laughs> Spence, you want to say something? I guess not. All right, moving to the next bit. Moving on to the next bit. So... We got this guy in the in, in, in the marketplace blatantly being braggadocious about uh about uh what's her name again? The Queen, what's her name again? Cersei. Talking about uh, mocking her in front of everyone in the in the state, thinking it's okay, telling them about how she walked there, she's a hoe, she does her brother, this, that, the other. And he was just he was just free, his mouth was just freeing up. They they you know he was obviously seen he was drunk. At the time I didn't think he was drunk, I thought he was sober, but he obviously he was drunk. He was there in the tunnel Taking a leak and then who comes behind them, bro? <laughs> bro. Robert Strong. Yeah, what's his name? Sir Robert Strong. Sir Robert, what was his name before? AKA the, the, the Mountain. The Mountain, there you go, that's the one coming up. Yeah, yeah. Comes behind him and, and boy, listen, without, without breaking stride, bro, he just gives him a one, he just gives him a push, splash the guy's head against the thing, and I think, whoa. Listen, it looks like Cersei's back, bro. It looks like they're slowly building, slowly working their way up towards uh, towards getting getting back their respect. And it was a good little scene. What's your guys' take on that little scene? What's, what's, up, what's up with these guys getting smashed on the fucking wall? One by a fucking giant, and then another one by a little giant. It was it was just kind of funny. Well, hey, listen, it's true. You know, it's, it's, that's interesting. It just shows you how how strong these people are, isn't it? They show you this the massive strength that he can smack people like a bug. And uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it shows, man. Anyone got a take on that little bit? I mean, it was yeah. it was hard to be impressed after the bigger giant like grabbed that dude and like it was a more impressive smash, you know. So <laughs> it, was, it, was just, it was hard it was hard to follow that up. That's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One was like Hulk smash. The other one just looked like a toss or something. Nothing impressive. <laughs> it was just a um, hit. The other one was like the whole body, like pa pa, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's your guys' take on like? So, the king's there, he goes, um, obviously, the king, 
his mother tries to walk and trying to say the kid said you, 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 you know he doesn't want you to say he wants to look after her. I didn't understand that whole bit. And then it makes sense that he was scared for everyone. He was just scared of everything. Jamie comes and calms him down and says, don't worry about it. No, we've got this. We're going to sort this out. And here comes the High Sparrow. Do you know what bothers me? How the High Sparrow could just roam into the temples. Could just roam in. And that bit supposed to be guarded by the guards. How can this guy just roll up after we did to the mum and just roll? Anyway, you see him confront Jamie Lannister. And I'll let you guys continue that. What's your guys' take of that? The high sparrow was rolling around the place. He's freely after what he did to the queen, after he did the, the, the king's mum. What's your guys' take on that? One of you guys. Look, man. Go, go basically, war was declared, and, and, and Jamie made that clear. You know, uh, I kind of like the the part where like Jamie told him what about sins, and he kind of threatened them with a sword. Uh, but I think you just saw what you're asking. How do they just do what they do? I mean, these guys are not scared of death, man. Like this guy literally told him, "Well, okay, fine. Like stab me then." You know, like it's, uh, you know what? And, then, and when Jamie told him, "Well, you got all these guys here," like, "Oh, don't worry. Like they won't get here in time before you stab me." You know, so and, and of course Jamie had to be a little cocky and say, "I I fought worse odds and stuff." Maybe he has right. He's been in wars, but um, I don't know, man. I, I I liked it. I think it's gonna set up the big battle in King's Landing, and I, I believe it will be the fall of King's Landing. I think, I think. King's Landing, this is my prediction, it's going to burn to the ground. And I think it's going to burn with wildfire, right? Um, I don't know which side's going to use it, but one of the two sides is going to use wildfire, and it's going to burn the whole city to the ground. Well, that's a good, that's a good prediction though, right there, man. Jay Dills? Cool. Um, that scene made it set the tone of this episode, in my opinion. Like, I love it when Jamie becomes a badass or an asshole or just – has no remorse for anyone, especially when he gives a fuck about something. But um. Oh, by the way, just to add real quick, I love that line where we're um. It's kind of, it's true even in the real world, you know, because he told him, you're gonna spill blood here, and he said, "Oh, the gods won't mind. They spill more blood than the rest of us combined." That was a great line. That was a great line. I was gonna bring that up, but hey, you, you <laughs> delivered that well, my man. You delivered that well. But um, what I was gonna say is uh. The kid, I felt for the kid. Sweet cupcake out of the Lannisters. So when when he went to his mama and says, "Mama, I won't be taught how to be a Lannister," that that kind of cracked me up. I was like, "Well, that's gonna be his downfall too." Just like that witch said, Cersei, all her kids gonna die. But um, then back to the High Sparrow and Jamie, right in front of his daughter, just happened. This is something about Jamie in front of his kids in a funeral where either he's fucking in front of them or he's ready to kill somebody else in front of them. It's just weird. He just has no room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, he wants to waste his sperm around his kids or he just won't waste blood around his kids. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Hey, man. Look, he, he's still, he still holding up. Yeah, the, the king doesn't know that the that he's uh he's uh uncle is his brother so he Jamie ain't letting him know that yeah, I don't I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know this that. is a guy though this is a guy that's fucking his sister you know it's it's not like morality is like all there you know yeah it's like what the fuck I mean but anyways to the point I I, I just gotta say man like the sparrow says when it's a bunch of people who ain't got nothing to lose they are in poverty and shit like that but a bunch of us as a legion we could overtake an empire. I was yeah. like, that set the tone where Jamie even had to think about it. Like, okay, this shit got real. You yeah, have yeah. all, you have all your Robert Strongs or the Mountains, but I'm willing to bet you the Mountains' brother is going to kill him. The thing, you know, I, go, go ahead, go ahead, Jay. I'll let you finish. Go ahead. We'll be with some fucking fire since he fucked his face up like that before. But who knows? Go ahead, Earl. I, I, I was going to say, yeah, like, you see the thing with. with with Cersei and the whole thing, you think this thing about the the, the, the high sparrow, you, you see the thing, how he gets you, you, you have to let him talk. I think it's no time to talk, and I don't care if you just they're gonna do this, they're gonna, you just need to wipe them out. See, see their father. You think their father's gonna be holding a conversation? They're bugs, and they need to be wiped out. You know, like in Star Wars, wipe them out, all of them. No talking because enough. you know it, this is a big city and. They have the backing of the city. Like this is millions of people that live in King's Landing. 
Yeah, but the city, the feet, they, they really the city. They're not they. In the day, the city are not the army. So it's like a case of a military attack where you just go in. You know, like the police over there where they, they do they do the attacks on people when people are sleeping in their beds. That's the thing you need to do to them. You need to the show in power when people are sleeping. That's the time you're waking up and you're going out. There's a stump. No matter. I can't stand them. Like I really said it from last week. I cannot stand them. I don't like the way they bully. The way they were the way they were bullying her, bullying, and hitting people with the source of that woman. It was terrible. It was like religion. Remind me of um in the Middle Ages, the Spanish Inquisition or something like that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they remind me of. They remind me of when they're deep religious groups here. If you don't believe in what they believe in, they're gonna put you to the sword. Well, almost like the Salem witches. That's the way I see them. I see yeah, them but, but you know you know what though? Yeah. DJ, like here's the thing though. It's not that I disagree with what you're saying about them. They're definitely religious fundamentalists. Like they literally, they believe believe by the book. Like they're, they're fundamentalists in that, in that way, right? But the truth is that they're only applying the law of the religion. Like it's, you see, it was okay when they would they would apply it to poor people, right? Yeah. But because you were a king or a queen, you could get away with this stuff. And it, apparently, these laws did not apply to you. They're saying it applies to everybody. If you're, if you're the queen, you know, and you want the that walk just like everybody else, yeah, you know. So in, in that sense, they're consistent. Yeah, but the thing is, yeah, all right. When, the, when let's say when when uh, what's her name again, Daenerys comes with the dragons. Is that gonna apply to the to the dragons? You know what I'm saying? Like you you they, like they they're talking about stuff there. That they gave no um, or Melisandre? Where are they going? With this? They, they like they going like they have. To answer to answer your question, no, it would not apply to Tar. Okay. The, when the Targaryens took over, huh. they got rid of those dudes. Like, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. So, so yeah, I, I get that. But all I'm saying is, yeah. right? I know like they get on your nerves, but I don't think they're as bad as some of these dudes, man. Like it's not. I don't look at that guy and say. A high sparrow and say, man, he's a terrible dude. He's like, he's just like Ramsey Snow. Like that's not what I see at all. Like uh, no. I just, I see a guy that believes what he believes, yeah. and he's not a hypocrite. He goes by the book, the same religion that everybody says they follow. He actually does follow it, so I have to respect that. I understand that, but listen to this: when you carve something with your skin to say your, say your part, but to me, that's the, I don't know, that's some a cult. When you carve a star into the in your forehead to join this set, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm not I'm not rolling with that stuff, bro. That's like some sort of madness, and they got this woman beating you into submission to get you to think how they want to think. You know what I'm saying? Like letting you free. You can understand like kings and queens and stuff like that. They're there and they they can understand the religion, but the religion you 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 attack the the monarchy of the, the whole town just goes down. That's the way I see it anyway. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, so we go to the most interesting bit. So we got um, what's his name again? Ah, uh, Tyrion. So Tyrion's in there in the in, in, in where the city is. What's the city called? Marine, isn't it? And they're uh, talking to Paris, talking to uh, talking to the guy from the Unsullied and the like. Grey, Grey Worm. Yeah, Grey Worm. And uh, they took they're discussing. And obviously Tyrion's getting drunk and this stuff. But he's, he's he's fairly conscious, yeah. Suddenly comes to the notion that you know the dragons they're down there. The dragons they haven't been eating. Well, and he thinks he obviously he's been reading books and MMT, so he says, you know what, I need to go down there, see what's going on. Goes down into the thing, and I'm thinking, he's going to get burnt to shit, right? But, you know, in the trailer, I saw, you know, we saw Tyrion in front of them, and I thought, yeah, maybe he got cooked. Obviously, he didn't. He speeds them down, and, the, hey, he went up there and took their thing, and I think that, that there is a very good look, because the dragons haven't really interacted with no one else, no one else ever, but they, but they seem like they, 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 they wasn't threatened by Tyrion. I know what I mean. I just saw him and I wasn't threatened by him. I know some way. Well, well when he, he's like four foot tall. Of course they weren't threatened by him. Yeah, but the dragons, they, 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 but when it's, you saw them burn down a lamb, they must yeah. have a lamb and a little kid before, so you know that what they could do. So when you see Varys, is why, Varys makes me laugh, though. Varys told Tyrion, Varys is standing on the top of the stairs wisely. <laughs> so he can see you what's know what this scene, what this scene proved again? Hey, go ahead. You know, Tyrion, for everything he lacks physically, like he's not a tall guy, as we know, right? He's a dwarf, but yeah. he's, he's not a warrior. He's not a fighter. He's not like he, he can't get a sword and, and have a great duel against somebody. But, yeah. I mean, he's probably – he's he has to be in the top three that I could think of in the whole show as far as bravery goes. 
Yeah. I oh, mean, he, yeah. He's one of the most brave dudes in that entire series. I, I mean, yeah. sure, he doesn't have all the physical qualities of a lot of these other warriors, right? He can't. He can't. He's not the guy you're gonna call, you know, for for a battle, yeah. you know, as far as a one-on-one battle. But to lead an army, he could do that. He proved right. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, even if he's not the best warrior in the world, he'll still go out there and he'll fight. He'll go out there and and, and he'll take off the chains on a freaking dragon. Yep. All right. And this dude has some serious cojones, right? <laughs> he he like he all he he called out his own his own family in. In court, I mean, like this guy has no fear, man. Yeah, I agree with you, hundred percent, man. I, I actually thought, yeah, that, I thought if they killed Terry off, that's a bad look. I didn't see any way out of this scenario. I thought this was a bad look. But um, Jada, what's yeah. your man? Tyrion had some of the punchlines of the night in that show. I mean, the guy was talking about if uh, I didn't have a cock, I'll be drinking every day, all day too. And I was like, wow. And then he was talking about <laughs> and then he was talking like I get I get drunk all the time and I know things. And I was like oh, you know, it's true. And then he said if I ever have a fuck idea like that again, punch me in the face. I was like, Yep. yep. And some tell some tells me and I've read theories about this, Tyrion might have access to one of the dragons. Other than the series, and maybe Jon Snow, but you know, we'll see. But back to the sequence, <laughs> I think Tyrion was just showing some compassion, and plus, like he said before he went down there, these dragons are intelligent compared to the one that left and was kind of reckless. This one, these two, for some reason, they're intelligent, they're observant, and they they tech calculating. Wise instead of recklessly, and I think Tyrion thought, "Hey, why not give it a chance?" Always won a dragon, anyways. So Tyrion was fascinated, and I think his hunch was right, but he was still intimidated. And by the time he left, he looked like he shit in his pants, but walked away with berries. Like, what the fuck just happened? But them dragons didn't kill him. So what didn't kill him made him stronger, and that's how I looked at it. I agree. And if you go to these stars, you want to add to that, that whole material in the dragons? Now that's it, man. He, he's lucky Grey Worm didn't whoop his ass, but other than that, he's good. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to iron off uh, Ariana Iron uh, Stark. So she's there begging. And you know what? She looks a state, bro. I look like she's been there for a good couple of maybe, I don't know, a week maybe or whatever. She looks terrible. Sandals. She just looks dead there with a begging ball. And here comes the woman again, beating on the ass. Well, I was like, oh, man, this is liberty, you know, vulnerable. And I know everyone's telling me, because obviously it's the spoilers people told me that they're in training, but fuck training, bro. Blinds, you know what I mean? And you just get bat in her face. She, obviously, she's got the wounds from the last beating the girl gave her. And um, she takes a good old beating. And I think, oh, this is, what, how long are they going to keep doing this? I don't like it. This is just terrible. And then finally, Jagahar comes out and... Um, you know, he, he grabs the stick as she's swinging angrily. She didn't care who she is. She was going to hit anyone at this point. And grabs the stick and says to her, <laughs> and he just talks to her and says, yeah, you know, I'll give you some food if you just say this. What did he say to her, I'll give you some food? What exactly his words were? I actually, it's such he slipped me. He will give, his, give her food as she says her name. He'll yeah. Give her somewhere to stay, she says her name. But basically, it was a trick to see yeah. if she fell for it, basically. And she passed the test. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then he had that for What would your take on that bit, of these stars, that whole learning thing? Learning? No, like, like I get it, man, but it's just it was a little too overkill for me personally. Like, look, I, this is a show where they chop the dude's head off and a dude's dick off, and like, you know, like a lot of gruesome shit has happened in the show, you know. But there, there's just things I I just have a hard time watching, and that's violence on women, especially little girls. Yeah. So. I, I don't enjoy watching a little girl getting beat up, like you know. So it was a little overkill, but at least it's over, you know, as far as that goes. And it, it looks like from the previews that she's gonna start whooping the other girl's ass now. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. Daniels. Well, well, well. It, this this segment reminded me of some medieval daredevil training or some shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it looked like it looked like. 
if the chase times ten or something and shit. But anyways, so I all I gotta say about this was Rihanna got sick and tired of getting knocked the fuck down, getting hit with the stick where her nose is bleeding and where you really want to throw some points so she get that fixed up. Mm. Too bad they didn't have surgery times. But anyways, the point is she she got sick and then her savior came and he says, Are you gonna say your name if I give you food? If I give you a house, if I give you some dick, will you say your name? And she was like, I have no name. I'm nothing. And he was so I'll pleased. give you a happy meal if you say your name. And, and she he he was about to collect that fucking um basket and she, he was like, You're not a beggar no more. Come with me. And she she went from sad face to finally. And then after that, you know, it was what it was. But at least we'll stop seeing this physical abuse. But these styles, come on, man. I get that you don't like seeing women get beat up, but do you really feel that way when you see Brienne fighting as a knight? But it's it's all it's all nuance, right? It's it's all. And this, I don't know. It's just, this is a little girl, like you know. It's a little different. Yeah, but but she always came off kind of tomboyish, you know. Like it's just different. Like if that was Sansa and others, yeah, I'll feel that way. But Brienne always fought like a dude, hit like a dude, and she, she put herself at risk. Whereas she she about that action. So I'm just saying, like I'm so. It was used like, to remember her- last season when they had that. That pedophile dude that, that she ended up killing and the kidding those little girls and shit. But I don't know. It's, just, it's kind of disturbing a little bit. N- not to that degree, but it was it was just a little overkill. It just did a little overkill for me. That's all. I get yeah, because you have values and stuff like that, and I respect it. And there should be some boundaries on Game of Thrones. But I'm not going to sit lie. Like I feel bad that people like Brienne get her ass whooped by. People like the mountain or something, and he bitch slaps her or something because she bulk like a dude, fights like a dude, and don't want nobody to feel pity for her because she's a female. But I'm, I'm going to get off that subject and get back to this segment and just say that now that uh, Arya or the nothing or the faceless one now has passed the test, she, go, she about to get the vision back. And um, I think she got blinded by wearing one of those faces anyways. I think it's some poison in that shit. But neither here nor there. I, I think she's about to get her vision back, and I think she's about to become an assassin or something like that. You know That's what? Just... You know what I think? And I think to myself, boy, I didn't think, like, it was pretty cool. I don't think she's going to disappear older again. I can tell you that. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I, feel... hey, I, I don't know if I'm wrong about this, but they eventually get their sight back, and then at that point, they give them a choice. You either join the order or you leave forever. So I might be wrong about that, but I think she's going to choose to leave. I think so, mate. No, that's too brutal. Man can't stay there getting pumped up. Like, get my eyesight back. I'm out of here. She just wants her eyesight back, man. You don't want to be good at whatever they think. Man. She wants to get revenge. There's other ways of getting revenge, man. You know what I'm saying? But Because, look, she already knows how to fight because she killed that. She stabbed that guy, that, that guy, I mean, that guy, Trent, whatever. She took out his eyes. Yeah. She, she knows how to fight already. So I've caught her. If I was her, I'd disappear straight. I want to stick around. But um, let's move on to Ruth Bolton and Ramsey Bolton and the other guy from um from the other guy, one of the leaders. That situation, yeah, it caught me. That, that to me, was, uh, what's he call it? WFT? situation that like, I swear I was like whoa whoa I didn't see that coming at all but you see the thing is when I look back at it now I can see that the moment the son was born Ramsey knew his days were numbered because he was messing up and he was coming up with madness you know what I mean because before he said to his dad give me a couple of army I'll go I'll give me a couple of men I'll go down there and get get back um get Winterfell back and he said all right and his dad was cool with it yeah but because Ramsey's so maniacal and vicious and wicked He's messing up, and his dad's like, you know what? You're really messing up now. And his, his dad was throwing his face. Well, you know what? I have an up, so I'm coming to get thrown in his face. But I never thought that he would kill his own dad. Never thought in my mind. But the thing is, he was looking at his dad. His dad was looking at him, and Ramsey was feeling unappreciated. And obviously, uh, he, his girlfriend died and stuff like that. So I think Ramsey must have thought, you know what? My dad's in his way. 
I don't care. We don't need them anyway. But I can tell you what, his dad, if you know his dad's in his way, his dad is pretty smart and pretty ruthless. He, uh, he's pretty smart and we ruthless. And, and most of the stuff, he, he was making safe chess moves, if you're talking about. He wasn't doing anything that wasn't going to get him get uh, the Bolton's finish. But Ramsey in control, hey, listen, it'd be lucky if, the, if they last through the week. But that's my take. What's your, these stars, what's your take on the whole situation with Ramsey and Bruce Bolton? Before I add my take, can you talk about the next scene? Just because I, I want to, I'm gonna tie them both together. So, are you? Are you want to tie? You want to do next scene? Go ahead. Which the next scene? What's that? All right. So, so, all right. So that that's I don't know what's the exact next scene, but that that's when he sees his little brother and the. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tie, you can tie it. You can go. Yeah, you can go. Go ahead. Right, what's the name of that big girl again? Uh, she she's a she's a fray in it. She's a fray. Fray right? girl. Yeah. So the fray girl. girl. I forgot her first name, but the fray girl and her baby. Yeah. Right. And what happened in that scene? Basically, I don't know. I don't know why she followed him in there, but she followed him in there. And then he let basically let the hounds go. All, all the canines attacked her and the baby, right? So at that point, I said to myself, "This kid is a fucking idiot," right? So yeah, <laughs> basically, I'll, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, this is what Ramsey yeah. Snow is good at, right? Yeah, Ramsey Snow, uh, he's he's very good. At fighting, he's a good fighter, yeah. right? And he's good at betraying people. He's good at those things. And he's good at doing, like, um, when he's in a position of power, he's good at abusing people and, you know, and, and flaying them and raping them and whatever he wants to do with them, right? Um, that, he's good at that. However, he's not very good at the stuff that his dad was good at, right? And that was preparing for shit. Uh making chess moves. He just did the two stupidest moves he could have ever done. He kills his dad. He's like, well, I'll tell everybody he was, he was uh, poisoned. And then he proceeds to kill his stepmother and his brother, and they get eaten alive by hounds. Mm -hmm. So when the phrase are like, oh, well, I'll send her body over here so we can have a funeral, what, what, what the fuck is he, is he going to say? Yeah. yeah. He's a freaking idiot, man. Right? And then they're going to be like, oh, so they... So your dad just conveniently died when the baby was born. Because they sent out the ravens when the baby's born. You know, so they know the baby was born. Oh. And then the dad conveniently gets killed. And then the mother just, what, just disappears out of nowhere? And the baby too? Oh. All in the same day, Ramsey? <laughs> it, it doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. You know, it just doesn't take a genius. And plus... Ramsey Snow doesn't understand the concept that he needs everybody in the north to be on his side. Yes. And now he's lost the phrase. They already lost the Lannisters. This is the, his days. Are anyone who does not like Ramsey Snow, now is the time to celebrate because he's he's almost done. Yeah. 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 Jay Dukes. This is not the same situation as it was in Thorn, where one leader was particularly weak, but Come on, man! Like, I knew Ramsey was going to do a um, uh, Cairo Jin type of move or a Ben Solo move on, like that was like Harrison Ford and um, Darth Maul scene right there. Like, yeah, that's what I said. I said the same thing. Go ahead. That's what I was thinking. Go ahead. Yeah, like as soon as they hug, I was like, he about to stab that motherfucker. I could just feel it. I could sense it. it Lord, do you behold? He was like, you will always be my firstborn son. And then, boom, Ramsey went for the shark kill, man. I was like, man, this motherfucker has no remorse. Nope. He always got to be about look. him. And then, yeah. And the fucked up, the most fucked up thing, yeah. And the most fucked up thing he said in the other scene was, I like being the only child. I prefer to be the only child. I was like, I'm the only child. I don't prefer to do some shit like that. I'll be happy to have a fucking sibling. Somebody I can help guide and shit. Mm -hmm. and, and and like you guys said, like Ramsey has no diplomacy skills. He is not diplomatic enough to withstand that role. Nobody's going to Julius Caesar. He reminds me of him. Yeah. Not Hannibal, but um, Kaluga or whatever his name is, or Nero. One of those type of leaders. Yeah. He, you know what, though? I hope it's not a weak death, though. You know? I want him to have a brutal death. Yeah. That's all I ask. Yeah. Like, put him alone in a room with Theon or something, you know, or something like that. I don't know. 
Dion do need to get his revenge back or something. Uh, that, that's his only way to become Dion again. Get his revenge. That's it. <laughs> Amen to that, brother. Hey, you, you, hey these stars, you brought uh, you got for a proper case some point. The phrase, I was exactly what I was thinking. I was like, you don't want to lose the phrase. I, at that point, I, you know what? I didn't even know that she was afraid. I said, nah, come on, man. You can't do that to the phrase. That's why. And the thing is, the whole thing about um, the Game of Thrones is, is building alliances. Obviously, he was part of the with the phrase when they killed, uh, they killed, mm-hmm. they killed uh, the Stark people inside there. And uh, because of that, Frey said, well, you know, take my wives, and obviously you marry into so Obviously, now he's married, and then he has the phrase on his side. You killed your alliances. What the freak? All, the, all Ramsey saw was a fat woman. And uh, a fat woman, and, and, and uh, I'm going to be replaced. So freaking what, man? You had money thinking that Ramsey's the idiot, bro. He's, a, he's, a, he's an idiot. And you know what the thing is? If he goes there, uh, he's, he's probably going to be going after a Sansa, coming up to the wall. Listen, them. Listen, bro. The moment they come up there, one one in the giants, catch that bit. We have to see that if it happens. Grab is gonna get destroyed, bro. Because the moment. Let me tell you something. Go ahead. I, need to, I need to mention this, right? And we talked about it last week, right? Remember I mentioned the Red Woman's vision of Winterfell burning. Yeah. And burning with Bolton banners. Yes. She thought that was gonna be Stannis burning the shit down, right? Yeah. But but it's actually gonna be. I think, uh, I think it's gonna be like a. I think, um, like whatever houses revolt against, you know, the, you know the Boltons mm-hmm. and join Sansa. She's, she's a Stark, and, and now we, as we know, right? We, we'll talk about it at the end. Uh, John, you know, so they're, they're gonna just join together. Plus the Wildlings who are already warriors, they already know how to fight, yeah. right? And then whoever's left of the Night Watch, there's, there's no reason to guard the wall anymore. So they're gonna invade, and the reason I, they kind of they messed up in the trailers. So Davos, you know the Onion Knight. Yeah. In the trailer, he's on a horse, and in the background, you see a Stark banner. Right, yeah. you see Stark banners behind him. Yeah. So they're either in a battlefield or they're on their way to invade Winterfell. Mm-hmm. So yeah. shit's about to hit the fan. I agree, man, 100%, man. Yeah, I'll put you on mute because I'm getting some feedback. But um, we're going to move on to the next set. And I'll tell you what, yeah, I, I, to me, killing the phrase, it was uh, killing one of the phrase, I think, it's, it's done. It's, he's dead, he's a numbered. And, um, hey, listen, it seems like all the old guys are getting killed off, but we're getting there, we're getting there. So you see um, Bray of Tar talking with um, Sansa Stark about what happened about her sister. See what's going on and that, and then Fion decides that he wants to go home. And um, I'm gonna keep them tight all together because it's not much into it. Tight decides to go home, and then they, they go over, so they move over to the Iron Islands. And you see his sister, Fion's sister, talking to her dad. This dad seems like he's just this nuts, like dead on this control and power and stuff like that, and then saying he'll replace her anyway. And then he gets to the bit where on the bridge. Now the bridge with the, his brother, I don't understand that because I could really see that. I don't know who he is, so you guys are gonna have to maybe elaborate on that bit. So uh, let's go with uh, Jay Dills. Jay Dills, on that bit, who's that guy on the bridge? And what do you think about the whole thing with Fionn saying he wants to go home? Because the episode was called Homeward Bound, and I think it was more to go with Fionn going home and stuff like that. What was your take on that bit? I think Dion was just sick of running away, and he knows he got to make some atonements and amends. He can't keep running away from his past, and I think he feels like he's unworthy to be around a Stark right now, which makes sense. And you never know. He might be the one that comes back out of nowhere when Ramsey has conquered a lot of motherfuckers slaying him, and he's the one that just stabs the fuck out of him and just do some shit. But then again, Dion might get captured by Ramsey again. And he he might get then um, Ramsey Bolton and uh, Dion's sister might have a negotiation of whether Dion should be dead or not. But I don't know what the scenario is going to be. But I think Dion is just trying to run away from his past, and he don't feel worthy enough to have a Stark's mercy right now. So he wants to go home and make amends, but they're going to look at him kind of weak anyways. And that's why they beat his ass and throw him to a Bolton. But 
it's either that or he's just going to go back and face what he has to face. I think he's not afraid to die no more. It is what it is for him. And I think it was profound when he says, I was willing to die for you for you to get there. So either way, I think he just feels like shit right now. And he he's just trying to find his way. And that's why I think he left. Okay. So what do you think of that bit on the bridge with his... Uh Fion's dad getting thrown over. Who's that guy? And what's the replicate? What, what's the? Oh, that was his. Bro- oh, that was the king's brother. Yeah, I know that. But what's what? I don't know this, the background with the brother, man. What's going on with the brother? They was in the wars. He thought he was dead. He came back. Why is he? Why is he throwing his brother off the bridge? Because I, I oh, go ahead, go ahead. because his brother always wanted the throne. His oh. brother felt like he was, he, was, he was a better leader than his brother was, and. Because of that, he always attempted to try to get the throne, but he always never prevailed. So, you know, the guy, the the, the great joy, the great joy father of Theon's, just pretty much said, "You're not good now. You'll never be good." And then, you know, I knew dude was gonna throw him over, like he did. But when and uh, when he did it, I was like. Like five minutes of conversation, and um, I thought the wind in this thunderstorm was going to do that, but I guess you no, know, it had to take a little brother to do the little lifting, and that was that. But yeah, it was always a personal rival, with the little brother and the big brother. Yeah, yeah, and that's how that went down, man. Okay, these guys, guys, give your take on that whole scenario, and even further, get to the point of the funeral and stuff, and, and they said that. She won't be the first woman to be a king of the Iron Islands. Go ahead, these stars. Give the whole take on the whole thing. Well, well first, um, this was not the episode where you wanted to either say or insinuate, right, that you're going to replace your son or daughter with another heir, okay, because you ended up dying. <laughs> so that's number one. Um, Bolton has a baby, gives Ramsey a look, and then he dies. This guy tells his daughter, you know, keep talking, you know, I'll find another heir to replace you, walks off and he dies. Um, so so not, not not a good look for for making those threats. Um, but but as far as um, the scene was just bizarre. I don't know. Um, I've heard about this guy, I I've I've kinda of read about him. I, I forgot his name, but you know, he, he's basically all over the place in both continents. Um, uh, he's basically like a really good pirate, is what he is, and that's kind of like what the what the great joys are. You know, they just they just have like a kingdom, and he just feels you know he's better than his brother, which is not a shocker. That that's like the truth in almost every family, you know, in in this in this series. You know, the the younger brother thinks he's more worthy. He's just more the same. same that's why the Baratheons had the little issue, you know, in season one and two, you know, but. As far as that goes, it was just bizarre. It seemed a little rushed, but I guess they wanted to just kill off uh, that great joy, and, and this is going to be a new character now, and, and it's going to be interesting. Um, as far as the funeral, I, I guess she just assumed that she's going to get the throne um, because of the way things work in Westeros. You know, one thing's passed down, down to your heir and stuff like that. But I guess, I'm guessing, I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but I guess the great choice have a different way of doing it, right? I don't know if it's like they vote on it or I don't know if it's it's, it's determined by power or they fight on it. I, I really don't know. Maybe it's very similar to the way that the Throck you do it. But I, I don't know if it's based on bloodlines or if it's based on power. So that's... So that you do? Know? David, you know, these are you do know that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so as well. I, 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 maybe I, when, he, when he was referring, I think he was referring to Theon. I think maybe uh, the old man might be still referring to Theon, her brother. I think that's the way it passed down to you. Or the uncle. The uncle takes over them, but no women. They'd rather pass it to any man than a woman. And um, well, I think oh, yeah. he, he mentioned about the law makes it clear that you don't just get the throne just because you're the son or the daughter. You know. Okay. So I believe there's some law in place or something that you need either a test or the more worthy one is elected maybe somehow. I'm not sure how they do it, but I guess we're going to find out. Yeah. You know what I was thinking? I'll tell you what I was thinking as well. This is exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking the uncle and the daughter conspired, you know. 
I was actually thinking, and nothing as well. How convenient that the dad were walking on the bridge. Where's all these guards? The Iron Islands, we've been just rolling. United the kids the wish, well, you can't just roll by yourself up and down the place. On that, that weekly bridge, I was like, where's, where's, where's the troops, man? What the, the place looked like it was just desolate. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're supposed to be a king of the Isle Islands, and you're walking across this bridge when it's raining and there's no troops, no one to hold the bridge or anything. And all of a sudden, you're confronting your brother. Like, wait, how can this brother just roll into the place? Anyone can just roll into that place? This, this, is, this is insane to me, bro. So anyway, I think she might be involved with her uncle in terms of... I think she might have talked to her uncle and said, my dad's losing the plot, man. I have a word with him. I don't think she put it, but you know what? He, he didn't, uh, that's what I think. I think she's involved. I actually think she's involved in that situation. Um, she doesn't care about incest. Maybe him and her are probably having an affair because she didn't mind letting her brother trouble her, so I won't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, this, that's what my mind was going at, man. I'm serious. That's, that's where I was going with that stuff. What, what is it with Westeros, man? The brothers and sisters. Yeah, man. Each other. He didn't care. She didn't the sister let his brother up. She didn't business. She didn't let her own brother just, just tag her up. She didn't care, bro. So I think her uncle, if she let her own brother, then she's, the uncle might be tagging her up as well. So um, that's my take on that bit. All right, let's get on to the main event of the evening. <laughs> Melisandre, Davros, uh, the, the, the onion maker, the one lost his fingers. They're talking. And he comes up to her and he goes, I've seen what you could do. I don't believe in it, but I know what you could do. Magic. Can you do something for Jon Snow? And um, she goes, she's obviously lost faith in her magic because she's there. As an old woman. But she, I don't know how she could lose faith because she took the thing off and then she turned old. Obviously, the magic's still there. But she's lost faith in, in, in what she thought was, was going to happen. Anyway, she rubs down Jon Snow, says cuts off his hair, cuts off his beard and stuff. And goes through the thing, thing. And in my mind, when I'm watching this, I was thinking, it's not going to ah, nah, this is going to happen. He's not going to come alive. It's not going to work. And I thought, yeah, that's what I thought. It's not going to hurt. Lo and behold, people were talking about the dog, John Stowe's spirits in the dog, and all these things, and Marathon is going to breathe life into him. I was getting all these things, all these scenarios from all these other guys I listened to online. And none of that happened. They all leave the place. The dog looks like, oh, what's going on? And then he, he breathes air. Like, oh, good, he's alive. He's alive, like Frankenstein. He's alive, he's alive. And that's what might, might be in. I think his brain's going to be fried like Frankenstein, in my opinion. So, these styles give us, give us your take on that, man. No, he's, he's back to life, man. Look, you remember the Brotherhood Without Banners? Yeah, I remember that. Okay. Which, by the way, may end up joining the, the Red Woman and Jon Snow as well, by the way, along with the Wildlings, etc., after we're done with talking about this scene, I have a whole theory I want to talk about, but here's the thing, man, right? In all seriousness. Okay. First of all, I knew it was I knew it was gonna I knew it was supposed to happen. I just didn't know if the show was gonna go that direction or not, because at this point they're away from the books. Right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it's like it's whole alternate universe now. So I thought maybe they're not gonna do what the books is supposed to do. Or what's making sense anyway? Maybe they're going to go another direction. So I I did think that for a little bit, and I'm kind of interested. The, the one wilding, he kind of gave the Onion Knight a look, and I'm not sure if it was a, I'm disappointed that Johnson wasn't brought back to life, or if he has like his own thoughts about the witches. And you know you know how like the, the Rocky don't like witches and stuff like that. Mm. No, so I don't know if he was kind of disgusted with the whole thing and. I honestly don't even know how he's going to feel about Jon Snow being back, brought back to life. You know, so that's going to be interesting. But I think Jon Snow's back to life. I think he's going to be his own self. Like it's going to be Jon Snow. Sure, this was a traumatic experience. He's still going to have to deal with that, the reality of what happened and stuff like that. Um, but I, I believe Jon Snow died. I think that period of time that he was dead. I do wonder to myself whether or not he communicated with his mother and his father and stuff like that. So maybe he wakes up. Yes, you know? That's what I'm thinking. I think he's going to wake up knowing that that's why it had to happen. You know? And by the way, for a little saying, I'm seeing people online actually saying this. It's kind of a, it's kind of amazing. This is what they're saying. And I love the show, but 
they're getting too crazy now. Like they're reviving Jon Snow. That's just too crazy. This is a show we have dragons. Okay, <laughs> you have all right. The the red witch, the red woman gave gave birth to a demon baby. Okay, to gold stab uh, Baratheon's uh, brother. Right, um, Sadness' brother. That is. Okay, this is a show. Okay, where they already revive somebody. So, so I don't understand people saying it's too crazy now. The show's been crazy since season one. You know. Yeah. You know, like, don't get me wrong, I really hope that this doesn't become, like, a normal thing, where they're just constantly reviving everybody every other week. <laughs> that, I hope, doesn't happen. Like, <laughs> That's funny. Go ahead. If, if they do it one more time, maybe. But but I don't want to see it where it's happening constantly over and over, just reviving people. You know, I, I don't want to see that. I hope that doesn't happen, all right? Yeah. But no, I don't think his brain's fried. I think it's Jon Snow, and I think he's alive. And and I, I and I think he's gonna take an approach, not a vengeance. I think him being alive. Look, when people witness the miracle, it changes them, you know. So even the ones that stabbed them are gonna be like, oh shit, like how the hell is this guy alive? You know, like all of a sudden, like this whole magic thing is real, you know. So. I'm telling you, I, I honestly believe it's, it's just not snow. I believe he is the one true king of Westeros. This show, Game of Thrones, it's really about, it's like basically a big game. And who who's going to come out on top at the end? It's going to be Jon Snow. That's my theory. But that, that's my taking away on the scene. It, it was a good scene. I like the way they did it. I like the way everybody just lost hope and just walked away and, it's kind of like they accepted the truth, like, oh, I guess this is impossible when they walked out. Yeah. But the while he even walked out, like, what the hell, what the fuck are we doing? Like, you know, he just walked out of there. Yeah. And um, Davos kind of was the last one to just be like, well, damn, and he walked out. The wolf never lost hope, though. The wolf never lost hope. So, yeah. there you go. Okay, cool, man. Thanks for that. J. Dills. <laughs> the wolf never lost hope. Well, that's, <laughs> I was about to say, like, if I'm sleeping, I'm staying around, too. But, um, anyways, what I was going to say about that scene was, well, at least Melisandre got her magic back. That's one thing, you know. And it was good to see her with that body that she appears as compared to how the ending fucked my vision up last week, but... Them raggedy old titties fuck me up, man. I ain't gonna... <laughs> what the fuck, man? Like, just show the the fucking face. Don't show up the whole fucking body and didn't have her. And then they were assholes about it. They they waited until she got in bed and tuck herself in. And I I didn't want to see that wrinkled back and shit like that, man. I mean, whoa, that was just a transformation that still subconsciously fucked my head up. But um. Back to the scene, Melisandre just looked like she was. She had no self-esteem, no confidence, nothing. And Bravo, I mean Davos, or whatever his name is, just like, bitch, I know you got, this. I know you got this, I know you got this. I seen you have a shadow, motherfucker, King of King. I know you got this. And then the wildling guy is like, what the fuck I'm here for? Like, what's the purpose of this? I mean, I just see a barber. Taking, giving him a well-shaped beard, and trimming his edges, giving him a good taper. But I ain't seeing no fucking magic happening. And then eventually, she was like, "Fuck this, ain't shit happening." And she walks away. Then the wilding guy looked like, "What the fuck ever?" And then Davos like, "Wow, I guess she has lost her faith." And then the wolf, he's sleeping like White Fang or something. And then all of a sudden. He wakes up like, ooh, I was like, yep, snow is about to come back, and then snow comes back, and that was that, and I was like, oh, shit. Outlet you know, was, today. They've done that before, though, too. Like, they did it with uh, Brent Spark when he was, like, in the coma. And yeah. Wolf wakes up, and he wakes up, so they kind of did that before. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I was just like, oh shit, Earl's going to talk about this. These styles are going to get geeked up about this. Boxing librarians going to talk to me to death about this. I was like, everybody get their fucking wish. 
for once on Game of Thrones. A fucking Stark rises from the dead, and he doesn't die. And, I mean, we finally, as fans, get what we want. I mean, for fuck's sakes, this was my my gift that I wish I'd get from boxing or something. So I was like, all right, let's see what this snow angle going to go. And like D Style says, I think this is the alter, alternate universe type thing going on. Because I don't, I don't think George R. R. Martin is going to have Jon Snow resurrected. But if he does, then goddamn. But let's see where this is going. And let's see if he's getting treated like the Messiah. And then what kind of power Melisandre is going to get out of this. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, underestimating that little witch. So... I'm just yep. go, go ahead, guys. I'm done. Oh, well, listen. I can tell you this, yeah, that I'd give a rating. I think um, this show should have been last week, and I think people would have been losing their minds straight away from the rep. I think it was just a continuation of the first one to get people on the page. And I'll tell you what, yeah, this, it's just picked up in mad levels. Like, the Bruce killing killed me. Bruce Bolton, I never thought would die. That one there. The old guy in the Iron Islands, he died. Then you're introducing a whole new character. Theon's going back there. Nothing else thinking about Theon going back to, to, to uh, the Iron Islands. Let me ask you a question. Is his balls being cut off for real? Is his dick being cut off for real? Is it, like, literally cut off? Or is, is he a eunuch? What is it? Like, I don't know. Like, can he make kids? Because I remember they, they were torturing him. I don't know if they actually did cut off his dick. Or well, they made him yeah, they cut off. <laughs> they cut off. Alright, so he's fucked. They send, they send it to his father, remember? They send it in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they might send it to someone else's dick. That's to fuck him up, you know? But I don't know. Alright, fair enough. When he's, when he's, uh, he can't use his tools no more. So, um, but anyway, he's going back to the Iron Islands now. Obviously, he can't make the way as himself, but he could he could come in there and try. But, you know, it, it's good to see him going back. So, they're going to have a new Iron Islands over there. You've got Ramsey, and he's got a new guy on his back as well. That guy will probably turn on him at some point as well. We've got um, Briatar and them not in the snow. I reckon next week they're going to be on the ice. I reckon Roos will be, um, not Roos, I reckon Ramsey will be chasing them next week probably, trying to chase them. They're probably trying to get to Castle Black. No thing is what I want to point out. The 1-1. One, one. You see how easy 1-1 one, one went up to the gates and knocked the gates down, right? So why did they put the giant when they were when the, when the wildlings were attacking Attacking the uh, attacking the wall. Why didn't they get the giant to attack that gate than, than the big gate? You know what I'm saying? Well, you have to get over the wall. Like it's hard to get a giant over that big wall. Yeah, yeah, I know. But but they that giant instead of them going for that big gate, the two of them should have went for that little gate. They would have they would have been in there in no time, quick. You know what I'm saying? But oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're right. You have to climb over the wall to get into that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got you now. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, that that doesn't make sense. See, that that little thing I, I wasn't too sure. Other than that. Um, the bit at the start and you saw the flashback I think that's excellent because I love all the flashback stuff because it gives me more great. I don't read the books right I know some of you guys may read the books I don't read the books I actually just go by the show and I actually watch the YouTube thing the, the animation YouTube things I love that I think that's excellent it gives you the background and stuff the last one was about the dragons and how they how they killed each other off as well the top, the, 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 um, aside from the backstories the books don't matter anymore I mean the books, yeah, because they're exactly, and, and and the thing is, all these people make a lot of predictions about Lady Lady Co- uh, Cold Star and I don't know whether Lady Lady Stoneheart or whatever, and all these other yeah. people coming in. Like I listen to a lot of people on Game of Thrones, like their predictions, and I try to stay away from them because they'll put some certain things in my head, and I like, this didn't happen, and I don't want to be angry or that, but I'm trying to stay away from people that's making mad predictions. Like you have to make educated guesses. It's not like we talk about in boxing. When we make our predictions of boxing, we make educated guesses in terms of resume. Uh, we talk about building up their, building up their, or look on their box record and who they fought last and stuff like that. So in Game of Thrones, I'm trying to make an educated guess. I reckon next week is going to be very interesting. What's your take, uh, these stars? Um, and next week, and what's your take? Give us your rating of the show in general. This show in rating, um, homebound. Look, man. First rating, I, I from a scale of one to ten, I'll give it like an eight. Yeah, a solid eight, man. That was a good yeah. show. Yeah. How much did you give last week? Like maybe a six. six yeah. And a half. Yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it was them bad, but this week was definitely better. And it was it, my favorite show ever was the Battle of Blackwater. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I love Fire, Stannis, and Joffrey like pissing his pants and all yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. But 
um, this show, man, it, it looks great, and I think it's going to get even better, to be honest. I mean, this is, this is actually good, and I'm actually glad they didn't have, like, I don't like the Dorn storyline, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But the acting in Dorn is horrible. It's just, it's, I don't know, I don't like Dorn, so it, there was no Dorn here, so that was great. Um, they, they did the whole reviving Jon Snow perfectly. I mean, to the team, man, they made sure every preview... For Game of Thrones, they showed no, nothing of Jon Snow in there. Just they denied it. Like the writers of the show were saying, "No, Jon Snow's dead. Like live with it." Like they're already telling people, "Like no, he's dead." You know. So it was just, it was great, man. It felt good. Like Jay Dill said, like to finally be right. You know, like get get the just like kind of result rather than like the whole like well. Oh well, that's Game of Thrones. You know, the good guys always lose. You know, it's just it just felt good to see like something good happen, and that's kind of how I felt. Like these, if you think about it, all the cliffhangers they left us with last season, the yeah. last episode, they were all the best case scenarios happen. You know what I mean? Jon Snow was revived. Daenerys Targaryen wasn't killed. You know, um, and then of course Sansa, she. she Managed to get away, and she, she, uh, Brienne found her. Like you know, just all the best case scenarios, and, and a lot of those big plot lines happen, which is good. You know, uh, Bruce Bolton meets his end. I'll be honest, I thought Bruce, Bruce Bolton was gonna stab Ramsey. I thought it was gonna be the other way around. Okay. But, but I guess that, but that's what I thought would happen. To be honest, um, I can't wait, man. I don't know when. I don't know if it'll be later in the season or when, but. Winterfell is going to fall. It's going to burn. King's Landing is going to fall. It's going to burn. Um, Dorne is in civil war. It's going to fall and burn. You know, and and then the real war is going to start. And that's with the with the, with the others. And shit, it's going to get really interesting. I think that'll be to like next season when the real war starts with the living and the dead. Um, but I'm more confident than ever now. Now, this is not a spoiler. It's just a prediction. I could be wrong about this, but um, I've always believed that when everything ends, there's going to be one king or one ruler, and that's it. And it's going to be Jon Snow. I know that that's that's, that's bold, but it's going to be Jon Snow's the one true king of Westeros. And, I mean, he already has a wild links. He's going to get the Brotherhood without banners because of that religion. He's going to get to the north now, and then he's going to go from there, man. It's And believe it or not, I think Daenerys Targaryen might turn into the bad guy. Ooh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Mm, that's a good point. A lot, of, a lot of people still think that Tyrion, Daenerys, and Jon Snow, they, still, they might be related. That was a... Uh, people put it out there, but that's, 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 that's interesting. It's, 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 Possible that they're related, you know. The it's, dragons, I guess it's possible, because the dragons usually roast people, bro, and that, that's why I think and that's why the dragon is roasting. That he's really the the the, 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 the baby of the Mad King. <laughs> that's what right. I was saying. He's the baby of the Mad King. It was it was his little joke, you know. what I'm saying to um, what's his name again? What's Jamie Lannister's dad called again? What's his name again? He was scary. Tywin. 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 Oh yeah, Tywin. I like. I I I like that Tywin guy. I used to like that timing guy. But anyway, I right, good take, uh, these stars. J Dills, what's your take? Give us your rating. What do you think of the show? What do you think is gonna happen next week? Man, D Styles is a hard critic. Um, but I like that about D Styles. Um, I'm giving this a hundred out of ten because you gotta look at it like this, man. For for a second episode. You didn't expect Game of Thrones to have all this type of action for the second episode of the new season. It's usually slowly built and shit. You don't even get a shock value moment around this time of the season of, of any of their episodes. But I was I was glad that I was like, okay, instead of last week where it's just one king, now we got like two or three kings dying this week. And um one by brother, another one by um his bastard child, and um, it was it was just awkward, you know. But it had to be done. Now, here's my thing. My my um 
my favorite people on this show or this episode was um Tyrion. He had some of the best punchlines. Ramsey was the coldest motherfucker on there saying, I like being the only child. That made me feel some kind of way. Um, What else? What else am I forgetting? Oh, yeah. It was cool to see that um, Jamie declare war on the Seven. And it was cool to see that um, there, that uh, Jon Snow was coming alive. And um, it was cool to see Melisandre look like she's 30 years old instead of 500 years old. And um, other than that, I didn't give a fuck about Dion. I didn't give a fuck about what Sansa was doing. I didn't give a fuck really about if the dragons were going to be unchained or not. And I definitely didn't give a fuck about um, Sir Robert Strong following every move of Cersei or um, that kid who's the sweet Lannister trying to become a Lannister when he going to die anyway some kind of way because the Lannister's a curse according to that wish that said it to Thursday. And um, I wonder now with this building going, what's going to happen with Bran? Nobody ever talks about Bran or his little brother. I wonder what's up with them. And um, I wonder what's the development of the children of the forest. I wonder what's going to be the de- development of Melisandre's um, rise to power because you what she did, they're going to look at it as a miracle or some shit. So, I wonder how that's going to go. And where in the fuck is Littlefinger? Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, out of all the three, to me, he's the wittiest one. Mm. I mean, Tyrion is pretty fucking clever. It varies. He always at the right place at the right time. But Littlefinger, he knows how to set up wars. He knows how to save his own ass. He knows how to kill you at the right moment. He knows how to backstab a high, high rank soldier, a right hand man for a king. I mean, Littlefinger could do it all. And I'm saying, where in the fuck is the biggest instigator of them all at? I mean, it, he's conspiring. I mean, yes. I mean, where is he? I mean, he is. One of the main characters on the show that nobody really talks about, but they know they should be talking about. And to me, he he needs to be on this show now because I think when Sansa gets around and it's still um, snowing in the woods and stuff, I think she's going to meet up with Littlefinger, and I just wonder if Brienne's going to try to kill him or not. I mean, it's got to be something, man, because this guy, he's been getting away with too much shit. Karma got to deliver on that ass sooner or later. I mean, come on. But that's my theory that he's behind the heartbeats, but I think it's a little too far off. But... Say that again, do you I have a theory that he's behind the heartbeats. Who's who behind the heartbeats? What, what, um, what, the middle finger? Middle finger. I don't think it's true, but the, there's some pretty well thought theories about it. Well, that, that, that makes sense, though. That sounds like as deep as he is. That makes sense. He is. That's true, like, bullshit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could even, I listen, he, I, I could be, he could be behind the high spiral as well, man. You never know. <laughs> yeah, man, this guy doing all this shit, man, he is the architect of all, all this chaos, man, man. Yeah, he is, man. He is, man. If you kill Littlefinger, you kill Game of Thrones. That's all I got to say. Yeah, he's the one who got, um, what's his name again? Look, I think his dad killed, man. He's, he's, uh, you know what I mean? He's, uh, he was bad, bro. The way he was manipulating things, he was bad. But um, there's some people with good hearts and stuff like that. They get killed. I'll be honest with you. If I was in the game of the world, Game of Thrones, I would have been killed a long time ago. Because when that uh, guy, Alistair, was out on the door, he goes, come out and don't worry about it. We'll be all right. I would have opened that door. I would have got chucked to death, mate. You know what I mean? Because that's... I would have got killed, so I'm just letting you know that in the Game of Thrones, yeah, you you never know what's going on. It's clear, like you kind of never know what kind of people. You got some mad people, psychos in there, and some people, but you never know what's going on. Um, anything else you guys want to add up? Add in or in the talk? Real quick, like, like, if you guys had to pick, right, just just one. Let's say the show ends, it's gonna be one king or one queen. Who's who's it gonna be? One king and one queen. I'm when, the when the whole thing's over, who's going to win the Game of Thrones? Go ahead, J. Dillard. You go first. 
I mean, I would laugh my ass off if it was Jon Snow and Melisandre, but we know that ain't going to happen. That ain't ideal. And then Jon Snow finally sees what he really married, and she turned to a wrinkled bitch and shit. <laughs> that would be funny as hell, but fucked up uh, at the same time. She's going to be more like, his, like a priestess or something. I don't know if he'll marry her, but... Oh, I get it. I get it, and you're right, but I'm just joking on that part. But to answer the question... I wouldn't be shocked if it was Snow and Daenerys. All right. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking Tyrion, and I'm thinking um, Sansa. <laughs> I'm thinking Tyrion. Sansa. You know what? You know. You know what I'm thinking Tyrion. I'm thinking Tyrion because when I see him friend up the, the dragons, yeah. You think you anyone could just roll up to the dragons and, and friend up the dragons? If Daenerys goes down and dies, Tyrion's in a good place that he got the most powerful force. In the whole of the realm, when you have dragons, you are effectively the ruler. So if Tyrion keeps going down there, drinking the alcohol, and going down there, the dragons then, and getting friendly with the dragon, it's a wrap. All they do is get what the, the last dragon. If if the if, if she was to die, the last dragon, um, he friends of that dragon. Tyrion can rule the thing. So I think maybe Tyrion, if if Daenerys, Daenerys would be the number one, obviously, and Jon Snow. But I'm gonna go with Tyrion. I'm gonna go. With- Daenerys is like the New York Yankees, man. She's trying to buy a championship. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everyone, that's everyone's favorite. And I obviously, I'll go with go with um, the Stark girl. Um, not Lyanna. What's her name again? No, I, I don't think it's Daenerys. That's like too obvious. Like the yeah. game with the dragons. Why not? I don't even. Yeah. Well, you got the dragons, yeah. You got uh, you got the Ace in the hole, and and uh, the girl with Brienne at all. I think she's in place because the moment they. You know, they they team up. She gets a she gets a couple of troops and stuff. That she's been through a lot of experiences. She'll be well placed to be a great queen. They were married before as well. So I, I just think it, they're making it too obvious that it's her to the point where it's not her, in my opinion. Okay, fine. That's I, I, I think cause I think she'll be a great queen because she's been through a lot of things. She's seen a lot of things. She's seen how evil people are, and I think me going through your, all your experiences will give make her a great queen. So I'm saying Tyrion, and I'm saying um, starts up. Start to start. That's me. Here's, here's my question. What type of assassin you think um, Arya going to be? Come. Um, I think she's very. I think she's very good already. When she, I think she really done to me. She really won me over when she when she beat when she killed Trent. That was it. The way she done him. The way she she tricked him. I think um, he can kill anyone because she just killed him easy. That's what. That's a guy who's been trained how to kill. Wasn't he a king's guard? He was a king's guard, man. King's guards are not no 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 walkovers. They can actually fight. She just went through him like he's like butter and knife, like like a knife through butter. So I, I'm saying she she can uh, right now she's leave, leave. the thing is she learned how to fight blindfold as well now. She can fight. Well, she's learned how to fight when she when she can't see. So I mean so she's you know pretty devastating. Go ahead, these dogs. I don't know these faces, man, like or women, they, they just. They're trying to do all types of assassinations, whether it's poison, with a knife, with an arrow. <laughs> they know it all. I think it's going to be some Assassin Creed type of assassin with her, like jumping off of buildings and just stab you in the neck and that type of killing. But I could be wrong, but that would be kind of fucking cool to correlate all that into the show. But she's like an Assassin Creed type of motherfucker, where she killing kings and princes and shit like that. I don't know, just my thoughts. That's a good, good stuff, man. Well, man, it was a, it was a very good show. I've actually watched it three or four times compared to last week, where I was like, oh man, I can't watch this again. <laughs> I'm, trying you, I'm trying to tell you, this show is a hundred out of ten because yeah. it's rewatchable. It's rewatchable. Yeah, watchable, it is because last week I haven't watched it. I watched it once and I skimmed through it and I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't see that fucking ending, man. Like that ending fucked me up, man. Like yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was on a, it left on a downer. Where this one's left you on an upper, it's left you thinking, oh, next week's gonna be really good. You know, John Stone's gonna be back. How it's gonna be back? You know, uh, Brent, then, uh, obviously Bruce Bolson has died. I don't think might be happy about Bruce. I like, I kind of like Bruce. He was this evil, bro. I, I actually thought he, he deserved a different death. That death was too easy. It was like when Vinny died last week. Remember the guy who was guarding the one in the, the Sand Snakes? The way the Sand Snakes killed the bloody king. I was yeah. like, man, it was the same thing. I was like, nah, man, come on, you're killing these guys easy. 
at least the guy in the Iron Islands, he had a bit of a fight or a bit of struggle. But this one, he just died. Ramsey stabbed him straight in his chest. And it was just like, oh, man, he just died? And the thing is, his look in his face when Ramsey stabbed him was like, oh, Ramsey, why would you do that? But I was like, how old are you, Bruce? You've been winding him up. You've been winding him up for how long? Talking about, you you know what I mean? If you don't do this, I might replace you. Which, and Ramsey's crazy. What do you think Ramsey was going to do? But I didn't think Ramsey was going to kill his dad. You know, I don't know if you guys knew that. I had no idea he was going to kill his dad. I, I, it blew my mind. And I think that was, that was like, oh, a WFT, uh, WF, uh, yeah, WTF. <laughs> I think so, the same thing, but at the end of the day, man, like, I really, really like how they began the show and how they ended the show. It was just a good pace overall, man, like, easy to transition to. It wasn't slow at all by any means. Yeah, And, yeah. and the dialogue was decent this, this week, too. So I, I was engaged with the whole show. I yeah. didn't skim through shit. So. I agree, I agree. But they... Thanks for having me in. I can't wait to do this next week, man. I'll be around for next week as well. Absolutely, man. I look forward to talking to you guys. I think uh, I've already hit Liberian, uh, European boxing coming over. V Star's already popped up already. Uh, probably, 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 probably good, but I'm glad he came over. JD Bills is here. So, boy, for you guys listening, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thumbs it up. Like, hey, follow these stars boxing. You got J Dills, Deals, Deal Town, follow D Town. Um, I'm EJ Boxing Live. Obviously, yeah, my name's Boxing. But Game of Thrones is my stuff. Yeah, Spen- we had Spencer shortly over to say his little take as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. We'll play out with a bit of the tune of, of Game of Thrones to see you up, man. So thanks for coming over, and we'll catch you next week. Peace.